Good morning. What a great morning. Isn't this a beautiful day? Beautiful sky, the sun's out, warm on our skin. Who could ask for more, right? God is so good to us. Um, I just want to welcome all of you here. So glad that you're all here uh, with us today. I want to welcome those of you who are on Facebook or on YouTube. We're so glad you're there um, and wish that you were close enough to be with us today. Uh, if you're joining us online, would you please let us know that you're there in the little comment box? We would appreciate that and appreciate seeing where you're from. Just a reminder that we're not having Wednesday night Bible study uh, until August 3rd, uh, and then we'll resume. We're just taking a little summer break. Everybody is busy during the summer, so we're just taking a little break, but we'll be back August 3rd, and it will be on Zoom also. Our July newsletter is available. Uh, if you didn't get a copy handed to you as you came in, there are copies out here for you, and we'd like for you to have one before you go home. Um, and we thank you, Ailita, for doing this. Ailita is uh, a part of our church, happens to be in New Mexico. And so she does the newsletter for us from New Mexico and that helps her to be more a part of us, and it helps us to be more a part of her. So thank you, Ailita. Our youth group is still meeting on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8. Uh, they're watching The Chosen, and they have snacks, so we know all the kids love snacks, games, and a great time of fellowship. Youth, please bring your friends. This is something to invite your friends to. It's a fun time. Uh, today, Pastor Frank Adu will be speaking to us, and I love it. When you, when you bring us the message, Pastor Frank. Um, Pastor Frank has a ministry in Ghana called Hope Fest. Uh, we will have a free will offering to help support the, his ministry. And if you're making out a check, please make the check out to Mahali Community Church and then put in the memo spot, Hope Fest. It's very, it would be very difficult for him to be able to cash checks to take back with him. So please, uh, if you would do it that way, and then we'll make sure that all of the funds go to Hope Fest. Uh, there's a handout explaining the many ways the money goes to help the poor in Ghana by taking care of the health concerns, giving them free medicine, advice, prayer, and school supplies. We had a short video about this last week, or two weeks ago, two weeks ago I think it was, and I was so moved to hear that $10 will buy a whole year of medical insurance for one person. And so just think what your $10 could do in the life of one person. So I, I uh, appreciated that. The praise team will be uh, rehearsing on Wednesday nights at 6.30. So if you're interested in being part of the praise team, please come. And uh, they'll meet at 6.30 until Bible study resumes in August and then the time will change, I think, to 7.30. But p please come. And wasn't it nice to have the praise team uh, a couple weeks ago when they were here? Yeah, that was so good. That was so good. Uh, and I'm hoping they're going to do it more and more. We are having our monthly prayer brunch today right after church, so please plan to join us. Um, this is a vital ministry. Uh, prayer is what holds us together. Prayer is what holds us up. Prayer is what gets things done. So prayer is so important. Please join us for the, for, we're going to feed you first, of course, because you can't pray on an empty stomach. So <laughs> we're going to eat, and then we're going to pray. Uh, please join us. And if you've never joined us before, please join us today. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, remember to save your pop tops for our collection for Ronald McDonald House. Uh, this weekend is a big family feast time for most of us. So if you're serving um, canned soda, get those pop tops or whatever other kind of pop tops you might have from vegetables or whatever. Bring those. We need them. If you'd like to give a regular offering, we have an offering plate up front and we have an offering plate in the back uh, that you can uh, put your, or your offering into. If you're watching online, you can donate using Tithely or on our website through Church Connect. I do mine. I say this every time, but I do mine through Bill Pay. It's all set up, and that check goes 
exactly at the same, on the same day every month, and I never have to worry about it. It's wonderful. Uh, also, there are announcement sheets uh, that are available at the front desk, and I think most of you got an announcement sheet when you came through the door. The girls were so good about having everything ready and handing them. Thank you, guys. Um, but be sure to take those home with you. They also have prayer requests on them, so if you would do that. Um, one more thing that I want to say, because we live in a nation that is free, we need to give God praise for that today. And the thing that makes us free is not where we live. What makes us free is Jesus Christ. And he died for our freedom. And that's who makes us free. No matter where we are, no matter what's happening in our lives, we are free indeed because of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us already today that we just take for granted. We thank you, God, for the beautiful day. We thank you, God, for this place that we can come to. We thank you, Father, for, the, for your Holy Spirit that permeate, permeates us, uh, that goes through us, that is all over us. We thank you, God, for that. We thank you, Father, for the time that we have together to love one another and to learn from your word. And Father, today we thank you for Pastor Frank who's going to come and shower us with your word, with your Holy Spirit. We ask God that you would bless him, that you would encourage him, that you would clear his mind, that you would help him, Lord, to know exactly what to say. We ask God that you would open our hearts, that we would be willing to receive it, open our minds and our ears, that we will uh, hear you, that we will understand. Father, we ask today that our wills will be bent to your will. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
free captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great.
Good morning. Whoa. <laughs> well, if you wasn't awake, you are now. <laughs> well, it's so good to be here today in the house of the Lord and want to extend a very warm welcome that Sherry gave at the outset to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining with us and worshiping with, with us today. If this is your very first time here, then a very special welcome to you. Thank you for being here today. And as well, for those of you who are watching online, uh, it's my uh, distinct privilege to be able to introduce my dear friend, Pastor Frank Adu. Uh, many of you have heard the story how we met when we were both students in Glasgow, Scotland, back in 2005. I was finishing up my course and he was just beginning and I looked up one day and was like, here's a face I don't remember or had never seen before. And little did I realize that from that moment, uh, probably early 2005 uh, to this day, that God would bring about such a friendship uh, he and his wife honored me so much by naming their second son after me. So in the whole of Ghana, there's one Darnell. <laughs> and then in 2014, Karen and I had the privilege of going out to Cape Coast, Ghana and doing ministry there and seeing the wonderful church that he and his wife have planted there and the work that they're doing. And you just saw the video. Some of you saw the one a couple of weeks ago about Hope Fest. And most of us in this room have given to charitable causes before, uh, perhaps even to places like Africa. But it's rare that you have an opportunity to give directly to a ministry where the person who's running it is in your presence. And you know that money's gonna go right back and help the people right on the ground. There's no administrative cause, no hierarchy that's gotta be taken care of first. He's gonna take this money right back to Ghana and it's gonna feed people, it's gonna provide health insurance for them, it's gonna provide health screening for them, the kids are gonna have a great time and uh, you get a chance to be a part of that. So if you feel led to, after the sermon, we're gonna take up a love offering and you can give at that opportunity. As Sherry said, if you wanna give by check, just write it out to Mount Holly Community Church, but put in a memo for Hope Fest and we'll make sure it gets uh, to Pastor Frank. But thank you for that. 
But without any further ado, I just want to introduce Pastor Frank Adu from Cape Coast, Ghana. And uh, would you just bow your heads with me as I just pray for him as he comes. Dear God, we thank you very much for blessing us to be gathered here today. Thank you for all that we've experienced already in your presence. God, when we come to this place, it's not just out of form or fashion or obligation. We do so with a deep sense of expectation and need. We need to hear from you. We need to hear from your word this morning. We thank you that you've placed a message upon Pastor Frank's heart, and we ask you, dear God, that you would anoint him and inspire him and help him to deliver it with power, dear God. I also pray for all of us who will be sitting under the sound of his voice that you would prepare us to hear what it is that your spirit has to say into our lives today. So bless our time in your word, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give a very warm Mount Holly welcome to Pastor Frank. Appreciate you. What time do I finish? <laughs> well, good morning. Um, um, it's so good to be here and um, again with you all. And I thank the Lord for the opportunity to bring God's word to us. Um, I also want to thank uh, my brother, uh, Pastor Darnell and Mama Karen. Uh, I don't know how they've been able to accommodate me for two months. I, my wife even gets tired of me sometimes. So, <laughs> But God is good. Amen. 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 And uh, I see my brother Daniel and... His dear wife, uh, they don't want me to put them on the spot, but these are my Ghanaian brothers here in Peoria. And so today, my brother and his wife, and his, uh, they've become such a great, great friends, and I really appreciate them. Um, they've been giving me some Ghanaian food to eat, so that's a, that's, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Amen. Well, so Pastor says I have... I can take the whole day, so um, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, uh, is Dexter here today? Oh dear, oh dear, okay. All right, then I have to be a good boy, so I'm good. <laughs> but um, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, and we're going to be looking at the spirit-filled life. Acts chapter 3. Um, Verse 1 to 10, Act 3, 1 to 10. And I'm reading from the King, New King James Version. Um, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his undivided attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. What? I thought you said we should look at you. <laughs> but silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to 
him. Let us pray. Father, this is the hour. Glorify yourself. Glorify your name. Spirit of God, I hand myself over to you. Speak through me. I hide myself behind the cross. Hide my weaknesses, and I'm asking that your strength will come through. I pray that Frank would not be seen or heard today, but your voice will be heard, and your Jesus will be seen. None of me, but all of you, Spirit of God, move in and out of every aisle and touch everyone under the sound of my voice. I'm reminded again of that scripture that says, the day you were speaking, the Spirit was present to heal. And you have not called the sons of Jacob to seek you in vain. Therefore, I pray that none of us will live the same, that you will touch each and every one of us under the sound of my voice. Let the saints be edified. Let the enemy be terrified. Let your name alone receive the glory when all is said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Spirit-filled life. Uh, by the way, greetings again from my wife. Um, my brother was asking me where my wife was. Did I bring her today? I said, uh, someday, 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 someday soon. But the spirit-filled life, the spirit-filled life, um, I, um, as we all know, Pentecost was the birthday of the church. It was when the church was birthed into the world as a unique entity. And so Jesus has told them to wait in the upper room that they shouldn't go and embark on ministry until they have received um, the empowerment of the Spirit. And, and, and so, but if you see, if you look at it, you notice that they had already received the Holy Spirit. When he breathed on them during Easter, you know, when he said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. They had received the Spirit, but he wanted them to be empowered for the work of the ministry. You see, you and I can have the Holy Spirit. And it's great to have the Holy Spirit, but the question you and I have to ask ourselves is, does the Holy Spirit have us? They had the Spirit, but he wanted the Spirit to have them. I believe that they were born again, but, but Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem for the Spirit to come upon you. It is one thing to have the Spirit. Uh, it's another for you to be empowered to be a witness. Uh, that, that word um, witness uh, in the Greek is uh, matus. It uh, literally means mata. It, it means uh, if even people don't want to deal with me or want to have nothing to do with me or actually even want to kill me, uh, I want to be used by you for your glory and not for my own agenda. So I, I spoke on Pentecost, and, and after Pentecost, I was reflecting. I was asking myself, what, what, are, what, what is it? What do we do after Pentecost? I mean, a mighty Russian wind comes in, and, 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 and fire sits on people's head. The Holy Ghost descends and, and looks like fire sitting on their head. Uh, and, and it's beautiful. It's exhilarating. It, it's, it's powerful. But what do we do after Pentecost? And so I, asked, I started asking myself that question, and I was, glean, I was um, 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 drawn to this text, sorry, and I gleaned a few things that blessed me about what to do after Pentecost. When you and I have received the Spirit, when Jesus has come to be in us, the Bible says he doesn't come leaving his spirit. So by the time we invite him in, his spirit comes to be with us. But how does the spirit-filled life look like? So in Acts chapter 2, these guys have been filled by the spirit. But how did they live their day-to-day -day lives? 
And, 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 and you know, uh, I was going to go look at um, the study, the Bible, and all of that, but I, uh, chapter 3 just drew my, you know, got, caught my attention. Interestingly, I had never spoken on that, so I started reading and started investigating to find out how a spirit-filled life looks like. Paul says we should walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit so you do not dis fulfill the desire. How, how does that even work out? Um, so in, in the text we read, Scripture says that Peter and John, uh, after they have been filled with the Spirit, um, they were on their way together at the temple, um, um, at the hour of prayer, to go pray. And the first thing I discovered is that um, being filled with the Spirit does not isolate me from others. Being filled with the Spirit, Peter and John went up together at the, uh, they've been filled, but now they are walking together. Uh, it, being filled with the Spirit didn't make them feel like they didn't need each other. Peter the doer and John the dreamer. I, I call them the skunk and the turtle. Uh, I, I, you know, <laughs> most, most of us process things this way, either you, you, you skunk it or you turtle it. And Peter was a skunk, you know, he would just blow up. But John was the one that would crawl into his shell, usually just lie on the bosom of Jesus and just, um, you know, get his head parted a little bit and all of that. That's John. But... Being filled with the Spirit connects us. It doesn't matter our temperament. Interestingly, usually skunks end up marrying turtles, you know. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, don't look at anybody. Okay. But the Spirit-filled life connects us with each other. So my, 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 they say that if you want to go fast, go alone. Uh, but if you want to go further and far, then go with others. My grandmother used to put it this way. He says, if you want to catch a fish, use a hook. But if you're going to catch fishes, Frank, you need to have a net. That means you must have a network of people that are in your life that um, um, sharpen you and you sharpen them. Scripture says that iron sharpen iron. Do not become spirit filled. And I, and I know a few, a few in, in, in I, know, I know you are all not, not like that. But in Ghana, some people who are spirit filled, you can't even talk to them. Because they are deep. And they are very spiritual. And, 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 and you see their face. It's as if they've been baptized with lemon juice. You know, because, because they are in the spirit. I'm like, bro, chill. <laughs> chill, chill. Be, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength, you know. We, we can still laugh around you. We can still crack jokes around you. you. You can still be you whilst you are still filled with the Spirit. Do not be a lone ranger. Because even the lone ranger had a tonto. So who is your tonto? Peter had John, and John had Peter. And we must connect. God wants us to connect. God wants us to, to, to scriptures are two are better than one. So God, you need somebody. I, I, I mean, preparing for Hope Fest usually helps me know, and it, it teaches me a lot. That by myself, I can do so much. I can do a lot by myself. But if I connect with Pastor Daniel, Mama Karen, and I connect with Daniel, I connect with Mama Sherry, I connect with all of us, we can make impact. Amen. We can make impact. 
Uh, snowflakes are, are light and fragile by themselves, but if enough of them gather together, they are strong enough to cause a traffic. I know you all don't know about that, right? But being filled with the Spirit does not isolate you. So they, they didn't say, and, and again, they didn't say, you know, the temple is past tense. We're the ones who are filled with the Holy Ghost. And so we would do, we, we just stay home. Scripture says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't say, we are the new thing in town. But they were going to the temple to go and pray. The second thing I discovered uh, uh, in the text is that being filled with the Spirit will lead you to the place of prayer. Prayer was one of the major forces. When Jesus left them and they were in the upper room, Scripture says they were praying day and night. And whatever is birthed by prayer must be sustained by prayer. I, I, I don't know if I can say that again. Whatever is birthed by prayer will have to be sustained because earth doesn't have what it takes to sustain something that comes from heaven. And so when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you, you don't become slack. You, you don't get slack in your prayer life. It, it leads you into the place of prayer. It, it doesn't take you away from it. It takes you into it. My pastor used to say, more prayer, more power. He used to say, Little prayer, little power. And then he used to say, no prayer, no power. My boy would say, so how is your prayer meter? You know, that's, that's the, the prayer meter is the instrument we use to measure prayer levels. How is your prayer meter this morning? Is it more prayer? Is it low prayer? Is it some prayer? Or is it no prayer? It leads you into the place. You see, God, God has um, conditional will and an unconditional will. His unconditional will doesn't require any involvement from man. It's subject to his sovereignty. I am God by myself. And he decided all by himself. That is his unconditional will. It's subject to his sovereignty. But when it comes to God's conditional will, it is different. There are many things he's decided not to let happen until he gets some human involvement. That's why John Wesley said, it seems to me that God will do nothing until his people pray. I believe that it was heaven's design for Pastor Darnell and Mama Karen to be here. Because I believe I'm, I'm, I'm in the right fit. I believe like I, I, I am, this time is God for me. But do you know that it was conditional will? And I remember standing here uh, during the installation and Mama Sherry was sharing and she said, we prayed for 21 days, fasting and prayer. God needed your involvement to get him released at the right time to be here in Mount Holly and take us to the next level. There are things he's decided not to bring from heaven into history unless there is some human cooperation with his desire. And one of the primary mechanisms that God has put in place to determine much of what he does on earth and in your life and in my life is conditioned by the presence or the absence of prayer. 
James says in chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, you have not because you ask not. Uh, so so, so I'm, I'm re- it's not that I don't want to give to you, but I haven't heard you call. And nobody answers a phone that doesn't ring. <laughs> true or true? That I take my phone, there, there is no call on it, and I just say, hello. No, you call 911. <laughs> so Frank... Something is going on. And God is saying, I'm sitting by my phone. Call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you have no idea of. But I need you to call. I need you to call. Prayer is relational communication with God. And the goal of prayer is to draw from heaven into history. Is to get eternity to make a statement in time. Is to make heaven visible on earth. It's to get God to touch humanity. It is to get 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 get, get up to get God to do something or to change something. The problem is we don't usually know, I don't know about you, but I don't usually know what is conditional, what is unconditional. And I grappled with that a little bit until Paul reminded me in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. He says, since you don't know which is conditional and which is unconditional, pray without season. Uh, just, just pray about it. Just and and let and I tell people most of the time. I said I, I really have no regrets. I I try uh, because because most of what I do, I, I try to subject it to God. I bring it to God in prayer. So if it doesn't work out, what is there to regret? I just take it that this is His will for me. But if I don't pray, then I'm, I'm in the place of wondering, was this God? W- w- could, could, it, could I have maybe prayed about it and get a different result? But if I pray and the outcome is not what I thought it was going to be, praise the Lord. Prayer doesn't get God to do what he doesn't want to do, but it helps you to assess what he already wants to do and he's conditioned it on your participation and my participation. Every move of God has been conditioned by human participation. And prayer gives birth to the promises of God. It gives birth to the promises of God. There's, there is no reason why you and I should fend off all the help heaven is willing to give us. And try to do things on your own human strength alone. We were not designed to do things or most of the things on our own. I, I was reading. Uh, oh, Am I okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Dana has just given me the permission. I said I'm okay. So I, I was reading my, for my devotion this morning because I wasn't going to go. It, it's too, you know, tempting. But since he says I'm okay, uh, my devotion this morning, my personal devotion, uh, and in Ephesians, the verse that this, they gave me for my devotion, it's in Ephesians chapter 6. And so I read Ephesians chapter 6, and I, I read it in one of my favorite translations, the message. And the message puts from verse 12, down, verse 10 downwards, and it says, and, and, and that about wraps it up. I said, well, Paul, that about wraps it up, and he writes two more chapters. I, I got encouraged because that's, you know, Dester would say, Francis, five minutes, but Paul also did the same. <laughs> uh, and then he says, uh, that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you, well-made weapons of the best materials. And he says, put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. 
This is no afternoon athletic contest that you will walk away from and forget about it in a couple of hours, he says. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. And this is what got me. Be prepared. Be prepared. Based off on what I've just said, be prepared. You are up against far more than you can handle on your own. You are up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon that God has issued so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you will still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You will need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon, he says, in the same way. In the same way. And I highlighted this this morning. In the same way, Brandy. He says, in the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. Pray hard and pray long. Pray hard and pray long for your, for, for your brothers and for your sisters. Keep your eyes open and keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Pray hard and pray long. Peter and John we're going to the filling station <laughs> to go get their tank filled. Anytime we come to prayer, we bring our, we bring our tanks. Zechariah said in Zechariah chapter 4, he says, we all know the scripture, it's not by might nor by power. But again, if you read it in the message, it says, this is God's message to Zerubbabel. I underline that and bolded it for emphasis. It says, you can't force these things. They only come about through my spirit. There are things you and I cannot force. We can't make happen. I can't make happen a changed life. I, I can't make happen somebody transformed from being a murderer to being a preacher. I cannot make happen. And because the disciples knew that they couldn't make happen, they resorted to what could make that happen, and that was prayer in the upper room until God confronted Paul on the way to Damascus. And brought such a transformation that humanly they couldn't have achieved. They couldn't have achieved. Thank you for that help, my brother. So there are things we cannot make happen. I look at the issues facing my life and I, I read around and hear the news and this person has gone to shoot this person. Yesterday I was hearing somebody has been shot 60 times and all of that. I'm like, we need to pray. If there was a time Christians need, needed to pray in America, I think it's now. We need prayer. We need to raise it up a notch. Amen. We sure do because God shapes the world by prayer. He shapes uh, policies by prayer. The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be, the mightier the forces against evil. The mightier the forces against evil. So, so number one, it, 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 um, it, it makes me connect with other people, spirit-filled, minded people. I connect with them. Number two, when I'm spirit-filled, I, I pray more. I don't pray less. I don't say, well, I'm spirit-filled. I have the Holy Spirit, and so I'm good. I can go a week without prayer. No. Number three, number three, is that 
it opens you up to the needs around you. It opens you up. It makes you more sensitive to the needs and the people around you. I mean, these guys, uh, it says, and, and fixing his eyes on him. Peter and John, as I said, were going to the temple. And then as they were going to the temple, we were introduced to a problem. The problem was this. There's a man who has been lame from his mother's womb. Never walked. So that's the problem. He's always carried. It's difficult to be carried. I'm not speaking on that. Let me leave that alone. That's a temptation with preachers, you know. When you, when you hit there, then the portal opens and you want to grab it. But, you know, I'll leave that alone. But, but it's difficult to be carried. And so he's, he's, been, he's been placed at the beautiful gate. The man is at a beautiful gate. But he has an ugly problem. I can be in the best of places. And still, there is an argument going on. So which of the gates in the temple is the beautiful gate? And, and a lot of ink <laughs> and books and, and an argument. Maybe it's the fish gate. Maybe it's this gate. And maybe it's that gate. I, I, I said, well, you know, any gate... That takes me to the presence of God must be a beautiful gate. And so he's at the beautiful gate and he's begging for arms. And he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple and he asked for some arms from them. And God has so much more for you and I than what we normally will ask for. He's, exceed, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond and above what we ask or think. Mount Howley, God wants to do great things for us. That this community has not yet seen. For eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Is not yet entered into the heart of man. What God has in store. He has some. One, one of the days he was telling me. He said. Tell my people. I have limitless resources. And then he says. Look at just the Atlantic Ocean. Huge. Assuming we do not have any other ocean. And it's just the Atlantic Ocean. Huge. That's how much God has. The problem is not what God has. The problem usually is what we fetch with. Some of us see the vast sea, but we come with a spoon. Some come with a glass, and you get a glass full. Some come with a bucket, and they get a bucket full. And some of us, too, have decided we'll come with a trailer. <laughs> and the question I have for you is, what did you bring to fetch today? Healing is available. Miracles have, I've seen miracles. I've seen God move. I've seen people healed. I've seen, I've seen demons screaming and shouting and leaving people. I've seen that. It's available. But it's according to your instrument of redrawal. Faith. Faith. What you are expecting may be beneath what's available. I remember I was looking for a house in Ghana 
And uh, any house I went to, uh, the dog gets shot. I was like, what? And then finally I got one, and I thought this was it. And it, it, was, it was seven bedrooms, and it was just what we needed. No, I don't sleep in all seven bedrooms, please. I have about 15 people with me, so I, I need a big house. All right, so seven bedrooms. I thought, yeah, we can manage with that and all of that. I call this guy. He says, yeah. Then the next day I call, I call him, ready to go put a deposit there. He said, no, I'm sorry. I changed my mind. So I'm confused. I'm like, God, what's this? Then somebody introduced us to this house. And I, I saw the house. I'm like, no, Lord, it's, it's too good. It's too nice. It's, it's, and it's eight bedrooms. Really good. And then and the, Lord, the Spirit of God whispered to me, and he says, that's for you. So I said, okay, Lord, uh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do the deposit? It's a little more than my, the budget and everything. But before we realized, it's been done. So I was asking God, why did you keep shutting the other doors? You know what he said, Pastor Daniel, I kid you not. He said to me, you were shooting too low. You were shooting too low. And most of us pray for the wrong things when our Father has everything to give to us. He has everything. It opens you up to the needs around you. So Peter is looking at this guy and, 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 and listen, please. Let's remember that he's put at this gate daily. Which suggests to me, and it's not the first time Peter and John were going to the temple. So it, 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 it kind of dawned on me that, okay, so now they are spirit-filled, they are beginning to see. They're beginning to see. The first time, they were all wrapped up in their own selves. But now, they can see because their eyes are possessed by the Spirit. And so for the first time, Peter fastened his eyes on him with John. And he says, look on us. I, I pray for a church. I pray for a church. I pray that, brother, God will bring us to the place where we can tell the world, look on us. Look on us because we have the solution to the challenges of this world. Look on us. We are not wells without water. We are not a mirage that we promise you something and you come close and we don't have it to give. Look on us. And the world is looking for a church. The world is looking for a father, is looking for a mother, is looking for a child who can tell their friends who are, who are, who are going through drug problems and, 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 and sickness problems and, 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 and emotional torment. Look on us. We've got what to give you to get better. I want to be that kind of a Christian. I want to be that kind of a Christian. And Peter and John decided to grasp the moment. Look on us. It's like that young lieutenant. I had a story after World War II. He came home and, you know, he was... Um, at war, he was with this general, and the general was so mean, arrogant, pompous, and, but he had to deal with him because he was his general. Now, they've come home from the war, the Second World War, and, 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 and they're going to, they have to go to their um, headquarters. And so they boarded a passenger train, and, uh, and he and this old man, uh, General Sat. On one side was one of those, um, one that you have a little room, and it's four chairs, two here, two here. And so the two of them sat, and then um, as they sat, 
uh, two ladies came and sat right in front of them. One was uh, a beautiful young lady, and then the other one was the grandmother of this lady. As the train began to roll and time went by, uh, this dashing young lieutenant struck a conversation uh, with a beautiful young lady and there were sparks flying. You can tell that a beautiful love story was brewing in this port. I would have called it African port, but I'm here in Pura, so in this Peoria port. Uh, and it's beautiful. And... and um, so the young man took advantage of the situation, grabs the moment and realizes that this young lady, you know, is in love with him and he is in love with her. And so um, proposed and all of that. And it was beautiful in a way, chatting away and laughing away and giggling away. Grandmother sitting there, general sitting there, but they didn't mind. They were, you know, they just, just lost in this newfound love. As they kept traveling, um, the train came to... A, a, a tunnel, so it was dark, complete darkness, and uh, I mean thick darkness for a bit. Then the sound of a smooch kiss was heard. Then it was followed by a cracking slap, the sound of a slap. So now there is a kiss and there is a slap. And uh, the young lady is delighted that the lieutenant had had the audacity to give her her first kiss. Um, but, but she was wondering, why did grandma have to slap him for kissing me. Grandmother is sitting there thinking, General, you did good to have slapped the lieutenant for kissing my granddaughter. The general is sitting there looking at this young man, reminding him of his you know, heydays. Wow, how bold he is to have kissed this young lady, but why did I get slapped in the process? <laughs> the lieutenant was above the moon because he was the only one who knows what exactly went down in the tunnel. When the train got into the tunnel, he realized he had an opportunity. And he grabbed the moment and kissed the young lady and slapped the lieutenant, uh, the, the general, who has been annoying him all this while. What is the point I'm making? The point I'm making is that there are moments in our lives that are passing opportunities. And you and I need to take advantage of them. The lieutenant, it was a Kairos moment. <laughs> it might never go through a tunnel again. <laughs> but nobody knew apart from him. What am I saying? I, it's, that's just on the lighter note. But <laughs> there are times when you and I have to seize the moment. And Peter realized there is something unique happening here and I need to take advantage of it. I've never seen this one. I've, I, I've never been drawn. And he looked at this man and he said, silver and gold I don't have. And that's my last point as I bring my message to a close. A am I okay? Are we okay so far? You're not bored? Brian, you okay? Oh, good, good, good. All right, okay. So, so I, I, as the, f the final thing we see is that he empowers you to use what you've been given. And so, Mama Karen, they, they, they spoke to the guy, silver and gold we don't have. Notice they didn't focus on what they didn't have. He said, but such as I have, 
I've got something. And this morning, I came to tell somebody, you've got something. And the spirit-filled life is just using what you have been given to help others. He said, in the name of Jesus, I have a name. Can I ask you a question? Do you have a name? There is a name that is above every other name. At the mention of which, demons tremble. Oh, I've seen them tremble. Sometimes I've, I've laid hands on the sick and, and I've laid hands on demon-possessed people and they've manifested and I go home and I'm looking at my hand and it's the same hand I used to eat. It's the same hand I, I'm like, my. Then all of a sudden I know it's not my hand. It's not my hand. It's the Jesus in me. And it's the name of Jesus. Oh, they tremble. And they tremble. And they threaten you. We'll kill you. One time they, one of them told me, they will kill you. Who do you think you are? I said, they said the same thing. You said the same thing to my master. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Do you have the name? Do you know, and this may just wrapping up, it doesn't work for everybody. The name only works. Is that my bell going off? It works with people with a relationship with the name. Peter and John says we are connected to a name. We are connected to a name. You, you see, the, this, this microphone is, is powerful. You can hear me, but, and it's, it's, it's good. But if you don't connect it to the power source, in as much as it's good, it won't work. Peter and John said, we are plugged in into a name. And it's Jesus. And at the mention of that name, demons tremble. So rise up and walk. Do you know he said that and the guy was still sitting down? Diamond, he was still sitting down. Then Peter used his hand and grabbed him and said, get up and stand on your feet. And he stood up. I said, wow. God and man. The spirit and the physical. The name of Jesus and the hand of Peter. Working together to bring a miracle. Yes, yes. Prayer and therapy. Oh, you didn't hear that. Because some Christians are going around saying, we don't need any therapy. Yes, I know. I know. I know some demon, de demons don't hear therapy. The only word the de demons hear is in the name of Jesus. But some of the issues people deal with are not demonic. And they need some therapy as we pray. So in the name of Jesus, but the hand of Peter was there also to lift him up. Peter used his hand, extended a right hand of fellowship to this man. And the question I want to ask you this morning is, what do you have in your hands? What do you have in your hands? You have to use what you've been given to help others. Not all of us can pray and say, well, in the, can have the boldness to talk to a cripple. But all of us can give water. All of us can give a smile. All of us can serve. We can use our hands. We can use what we... Peter, what do you have in your hands? Peter said, I'm a fisherman. Jesus said, I'm going to make you the fisher of men. 
John, what do you have? He said, I mend nets. He says, I'm going to use you to mend lives. Paul, what do you have? He says, I'm a scholar. I'm a lawyer. He says, well, I'm going to use you to write. Matthew, what do you have? Matthew says, I'm, I'm good with data. I'm, 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 I'm the weird one. I'm a nerd. You know, I'm, I'm weird, but I can, I can store data. He says, well, then, then take records. Frank, what do you have? And all I had was a certificate in political science. And I said I was going to be an ambassador. That's all I wanted to do, be an ambassador for my country. Go into politics and be an ambassador for Ghana. That's my life goal. And he came and said, Frank, can you hand it over to me? You would be my ambassador. And that's why I'm standing here today. What do you have? Maybe yours is your voice. A heart for children. Everybody has something. You can give something. And Jesus expects you to use what you've been a word of encouragement, maybe a note that you just decide. Anytime I see somebody down, I'm not going to write them an email. I'm going to buy a card and take a pen and write because it's precious today. And people get encouraged. You have something. You have something. And that's a spirit-filled life. As I finish, are you connected to the name? The sons of Sceva were going about saying in the name of Jesus, trying to heal the sick, trying to cast out dem- devils. Let me read my last scripture and then I'm done. Skip, 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 please. Give me the last one. I know Dexter is here, so I don't, I don't want to be in trouble after the service. I know I'm already, I already am, but... A group of Jews were traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirit. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, Pastor Daniel, a leading priest, were doing this. They didn't know that God didn't have grandchildren. Oh, you didn't, meet, you didn't get that. They thought they had access because their father had access. They didn't know that relationship with Christ is on individual basis. So they were using their father's God and saying, yes, in the name of our father's God, come out. But one time when they did it, The evil spirit replied, I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit (laughs) leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. Don't try this at home. (laughs) If you're not connected to the source, today you have an opportunity. I didn't used to be connected to the source. But one day I decided to get connected, to get plugged in. And it's made all the difference in my life. You get connected with other people. You become a person of prayer. Your eyes get open to the needs around you. That's why Hope First is there. 
Before I became born again, there was no hope first. It was me first. It was all about me. Then you get to use what you've been given. And every one of us has something that we can use for the glory of God. Amen. Let's pray. Anytime I finish, I usually want to ask, what are you going to do differently as a result of what you have heard? The first question is, how's your connection? Are you connected to the Son of God? Because that's where life flows from. Everything else I've said hinges on that. And if you are not born again, if you've not given your heart to him, you have an opportunity to do that as Pastor Daniel comes to lead us in prayer. Number two, you have, you have received Christ. How's your connection? Are you a lone ranger? Are you a team player? Are you connected? Number three, you're connected to the sun, you're connected to people, but then your eyes you are drawn into the place of prayer. On the scale of one to 10, where are you on your prayer life? Remember that is waiting on your call. It's a time of evaluation. Are your eyes open to the needs of others? Is it you minded or others minded? Do you think about others? Or it's just you? On the scale of one to ten. Who will miss you if you go? If you are not there. Have you used what you've been given to help others? Have you found out what you've been given? Because there's something you have that the world needs. And God is counting on you to use it for his glory. Father, thank you for your word to us. Thank you for breaking it down for us to understand. With the spirit of truth comes the spirit of grace. And I pray that, Lord, grace to be doers, not just inspired, but transformed not just challenged, but changed, that that grace would be our portion today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive Pastor Darnell, please. Thank you. Amen. Well, it is our privilege uh, today to be able to observe the Lord's Supper once again until he comes. And as we transition to that, I uh, just want to, first of all, read a passage of scripture here in 1 John, uh, beginning in chapter 1, verse number 5. And here the Apostle John is using a metaphor of light and darkness to describe living in relationship with Jesus Christ and living without him. And uh, it kind of goes along with what you've been preaching on, Pastor, about the spirit-filled life, because when we have the spirit-filled life, we're walking in the light. First John chapter 1, verse 5 says this. This is the message we have heard from him, speaking of Jesus, and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, 
we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in our lives. Dear children, I write this so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. As we take communion, we're reminded that Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. When we take the bread, it reminds us that it was his body that was broken for us. And when we drink from the cup, we're reminded that it's his blood that is shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And so we celebrate that. We remember that again today. We invite all who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to partake with us because this is a great privilege and responsibility for each and every one of us. And so we want to do that now. Uh, I'm going to ask you all now if you would stand at this time. And before we um, take of the bread and cup, I'm we'll give you an opportunity to come either to the front to get the elements or you can go to the back table, whichever is closest to you. And then once you have one, you can return to your seat. Also going to invite you to bring your gifts. If you've come prepared to worship God through giving and to give to the love offering that we're raising this morning, you'll find a, a basket at the back, a plate, excuse me, at the back and at the front, and you can bring your gift at this time. So let's do this while we hear this song. God bless you.
Amen. You may be seated. The greatest challenge that mankind has ever faced is the challenge and the problem of sin. It's why God sent his one and only son into the world so that he could die on the cross for our sins. And the problem with sin is that sin at its root is the destruction of community. It destroys our relationship with God and it destroys our relationship with one another. And there's a problem we were powerless to solve in our own strength. But there was one person who could, and that's Jesus Christ. And so we thank God today for Jesus Christ and for what he means for us and what he has done and is doing in our life. I'm going to ask Sherry, would you mind coming and giving thanks for the bread that we take, which again represents the broken body of Jesus Christ and reminds us that although salvation is free, it's not anything we have to pay for or earn. It's not even thing that we deserve. But although it was free, it's not cheap. It was paid for with a very dear price, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that uh, as we take this communion, that is a symbol. But Father, we also know that it is a symbol of your son, Jesus, who died for our sins. We ask God now that you would bless this bread as we take it into our bodies. We ask God that with this bread, you will give us the very backbone of Jesus Christ, that we will stand tall, that we will stand firm, and that we will stay planted and rooted deeply in him. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Steve, would you come now and give thanks for the cup? Thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the cup, Lord. It means so, so much to us and so much more than just wine or grape juice in a cup, Lord. It, it symbolizes the blood that was shed by your son for what we've done, not what he did. He did nothing wrong. He loved us so much that he allowed himself to be bludgeoned, to be estranged from you for a while. But yet he loved us. He loved us so much. And God, I just pray, God, that we will pray we will pay tribute to him today that we won't think of this as a ritual but we'll really think of this paying homage to Jesus Christ for his love I ask this all under Jesus name I pray amen The scripture says that after they had eaten the bread, he also took the cup and he blessed it and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Amen. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. Wow. Amen. God indeed is good. Well, just before our dear sister Sherry comes to close our service in prayer, let me just thank you once again for being here. For those of you who are watching online, it's really good to see each and every one of you. I hope you won't rush away. Immediately after the service, we're going to be having our prayer brunch. brunch. We'll have some food and then uh, a time of prayer. And as you reminded us, uh, Pastor Frank, times of prayer are so important. I have a dream one day as, a, as, a pastor, as the pastor of this church, and that is that our prayer meetings 
will be the most attended services in the church. How does that sound? <laughs> Amen. That when we have times of prayer, the place is full because nothing happens until we pray. We really need to take that seriously, but God bless you. I also want to ask you to remember our dear granddaughter, Maya. Uh, God willing, uh, we'll be driving to Chicago tomorrow so that she can meet her grand from Scotland. And she'll be going there to visit her other family for a few weeks. So just keep her in your prayers. We're going to miss you, Maya. Now, you make sure you come back, all right? Don't get back over there in Scotland and decide to stay. <laughs> but uh, we're thrilled that she has a chance to, to go back. Uh, so remember her in prayer. God bless you. Sherry, would you come and end our time in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before you, God, humbled by the word that we've heard today, humbled, Lord, uh, to have to analyze our own prayer life, 1 to 10, and uh, the number sometimes isn't so good. So we ask, God, that you would bless us to be a people who are praying. Help us, God, to plug into the source, which is Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that fills each one of us with you and with your spirit. We thank you, God, that you love us so much that even in the times when we are so neglectful that you're there, we thank you, God, that you prepared the way for us, that you've called us into service for you. We thank you, Lord. Help us, God, to come ready with a large bucket to take away from here today. Father, bless your people. <clears throat> bless our time together. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.